<laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire. Now, today, per the request of our Emperor of Tamriel, Tiber Septim, we are going over another character class from Pathfinder, and this one is the Occultist. Now, the Occultist, they are found in the Occult Adventures book. And the Occult Adventures book int introduces some interesting rules and uh, some interesting classes. It kind of tweaks and messes with things, and they're in ways that make sense, but it does add some further complications to running the game because now you have psychic powers or at least psychic magical effects. Uh, these psychic powers, especially when it comes to the spell casting, are essentially just magic. The magic spells we already know, but they're considered psychic. And what that means is that their methods of spell of casting them are changed. Instead of having verbal and somatic components, they have mental and emotional components, meaning you have to be focused and your emotions have to be stilled and calmed, which, you know, that makes sense. Feels very Jedi, feels very, uh, well, psychic. It's all about mental and emotional discipline. Uh, and, but, uh, ah, it, the thing with Occult Adventures is, well, a couple of things, actually. I have never really used it. I've had the book for a couple of years now, but just never got around to implementing anything from it. None of my players have really ever expressed interest in it, and so I'm not 100% familiar with it. So covering the Occultist is going to be a learning experience for me, more so than maybe some of you out there. The other thing is, is that the book is not very well written, and the online system reference document very much reflects the writing in the books. Some of the abilities, which are intrinsically linked, they're just fundamentally part of one another, are treated as separate sections, but you need to read them both in order to make sense of the occult disabilities. So, Part of what I'm going to do with this guide, as much as I am focusing on a build, I'm also going to do the best I can to give you a breakdown on how the occultist is supposed to function. Now, by the end of it, I want to come out with something that is mechanically effective, something fairly well optimized, but there will be inevitably, I believe, some of you out there who are thoroughly more knowledgeable than me. Now. There's already been some comments on some of my previous older videos by uh, a particular individual that's pointed out some flaws that I had made in the course of making the videos, which honestly I'm fine with. Uh, really, that's just the process of learning, and that's where mastery really comes in, is accepting your flaws, learning from them, learning from your mistakes, and then doing better and not getting caught up in the fact that you made a mistake. You just go, ah, well, shit, messed up. But you know what? I know better now, so I can do better in the future. So that's what we're going to try to do here. Do the best we can until we know better and then do better going forward. So hence why we're doing this guide. So the occultist, what does the occultist do? Well, they're in an interesting position. We'll go over all of their abilities and such later on, but they get a solid attack bonus progression. It's not the same one for every level like you see with paladins, spiders, barbarians, etc. But they're kind of like the bards in that regard. They have a good attack bonus progression. They get some decent saves. Uh, uh, Fortitude and Will are particularly strong. Reflex is not great. Um, they are proficient with up to medium armor, a wide range of martial weapons. In fact, I believe it's all martial weapons. Uh, they all, they're also proficient with shields. They have some spell casting. They have some decent skill progression and also some interesting skills. And their class abilities go towards supporting a few of those skills very well. Uh, so they seem to, at least at first glance, occupy that same spot as a bard. Also, they're spontaneous spellcasters, or in this case, psychic spell users, meaning that they don't have to prepare their spells ahead of time, they just have to have the available spell slots. They're ready to go. 
but they focus on using implements to activate their spells. If they lack an implement, well, they still have access to the spells that that implement would normally provide to them, but they're cast at the bare minimum caster level. So a first level spell is fired off at first level, even if the uh, occultist is level 20. If they lack their implement, they're unable to uh, maximize the potential of their magic. So it's definitely an interesting class, and it presents some challenges, which I'm just barely scratching the surface when it comes to their spell casting and implements. That'll be for another episode and possibly may include some another kind of a primer regarding a more thorough look at spell casting because I realize that's something I haven't done yet. But now with all of that out of the way, what races work really well for the occultist? Well, their spell casting and many of their abilities run off of their intelligence score. So anything that gives us a bonus to intelligence is going to be incredibly important. Not only that, but dexterity is, as always, a very important score. It affects your initiative, your reflex saves, your various, various other skills. It can also affect your attack bonus. And so with this particular build in mind, I want to do something that emphasizes the core strength of the class with its intelligence score and all of the spell casting and abilities derived from the intelligence modifier, as well as bump up their dexterity, get something with a decent defense going here, as well as being able to wade a bit into the melee with their spell casting, boosting their abilities, and uh, using of being basically being a finesse combatant, taking a rapier or a short sword and using weapon finesse and different weapon enchantments so that way they are not focused on beefing up their strength to do damage, it's all coming out of their dexterity. So to that end, one of the first races that's going to be incredibly useful for this build on the occultist is the elf. Elves get that plus two bonus to their dexterity and intelligence scores. The minus two to their constitution hurts, but the plus two bonus to spell penetration checks will help to make up for that with the different spell options that they do have. Their favorite class option allows you to get more mental focus points at a half point for each level. Now, mental focus points are an ability that will come up later, but it's massively important and the elf with this favored class ability lets you rack up a a hefty number of mental focus points and it's something that's very much so in precious supply that you want in order to activate different abilities. Then we come to rat folk. They get the same bonuses as the elf but their penalty is a minus two to strength which really doesn't hurt this build since we want to focus on the intelligence and dexterity. They're small sized and so that gives them bonuses to their defense or different reflex saves. Uh, skill bonus to perception and use magic device, which use magic device is huge for occultists. It's massively important. For favored class, they gain one sixth of a new focus power, which again will get into the focus powers and mental focus points at a later point in time. But that's not a bad ability to have. It's not as good as mental focus points, but still. After that, we come up to the Tifling which is a plus two bonus to dexterity and intelligence with a minus two to charisma. Now, minus two to charisma isn't so bad, but it does affect use magic device, which that is a skill you absolutely need. You absolutely have to have it. You're a native outsider, which means that you get cold electricity and fire resistance of five, which is great. Dark vision out to 60 feet, now, you, get, you also normally get the skilled ability, which gives you bonuses to, thing, to the skills like Bluff, but if you swap that out for Vestigial Wings, you'll get a plus four bonus to your Fly skill, which uh, is very nice, and the Occultist has abilities that unlocks Fly for themselves and can eventually just kind of make it more or less a permanent effect once they activate it and get it going. So definitely something worthwhile to consider here. And then we have humans, ever reliable, ever capable, but in this case, they're not quite the be all end all. 
that uh, usually fits in so snugly with every other class. They're not a bad choice by any stretch, though, because you get that plus two flexible bonus for wherever you want. You gain a bonus feat, which will be very nice for any combat feats you might want for wading into the melee, and you get an extra skill point per level. For the favorite class bonus, it's the same as the Rat Folk. You gain one six of a new of focus power. So not bad at all. Human is always a nice, comfortable choice for whatever class you want to go with, though the other three previously mentioned are much, much better, particularly the elf. Now, from there, traits. Traits are a thing that I keep forgetting, well, is a thing for Pathfinder, and there are hundreds of them. If you have the option to use traits, the two down below here are incredibly useful regardless of whatever your build may be. The first of which is Pragmatic Activator, which will let you use your Intelligence modifier for Use Magic Device instead of Charisma, which will bypass your need for a good or even just a decent Charisma score. You can turn it into a dump stat. This is huge because we're focusing on boosting our Intelligence and, well, having a dump stat will f let us free up uh, attribute points to put into other uh, other stats. And then we also have student of philosophy. So you use your intelligence modifier on diplomacy checks to persuade others or on bluff checks to convince others a lie is true. Now this won't substitute for if you're bluffing to do a feint or anything like that, so it's not going to 100% replace your charisma bonus for these various skills, but being able to substitute out your intelligence for some things is still going to be useful, especially if you're in some kind of a situation where, for whatever reason, you're the one having to lie, or, uh, or persuade us someone to do something. Ideally, you shouldn't be, because, uh, we want to have skill points available for other areas, for other skills, but, you know, this doesn't hurt to have, and certainly it's going to be useful for whatever build you may be using, just because we are focusing on intelligence. Any build you do with the occultist should focus on intelligence, because even if you're not doing, focusing as much on spell casting, the focus points and mental focus powers and everything unlock some really, really good abilities for the occultist. So intelligence will always be important, making student of philosophy a reliably useful trait to pick up. And then from there, we come to our stats. What kind of an array we want? Well, here, strength and wisdom are kind of tied here for being okay to have. You don't want to drop them too far into the negatives, if at all, but, you know, you can get away with them being just average, as long as they're not giving you a penalty or too huge of a penalty. Then dexterity and intelligence we have tied, and we want both of those in at 16s. 16s because, well, that plus three bonus to our intelligence, that gives us more skill points, allows us to access our our full array of spells that we can cast all the way up to that sixth level point. Uh, and dexterity, well, that's a bonus to our defense, initiative, skills, reflex saves. And our reflex saves are not great, so getting a bonus in there will be helpful. And then constitution. Constitution is important, but the other two stats are just that much more important than constitution. Besides, you are not going to be the primarily primary melee combatant, or at least you sh ideally it shouldn't be. But uh, with medium armor, a good dexterity score, having an okay constitution, you can get away with that here. And this stat array assumes that you're going to be having a 20-point buy. If you're able to roll 46, keeping the three highest numbers out of all of that and uh, re-rolling ones, well then you're going to allocate your stats similar to this, focusing on intelligence first, then dexterity, then your constitution, kind of a tie between wisdom and strength there, and then charisma can be your dump stat. And if you roll great stats all the way through, well then, hey, fantastic, good for you, still focus in this order. Humans and other races that have flexible stat bonuses like half-orcs or half-elves should focus on intelligence first. That's where they should put their flexible stat bonus, 
that's what you want to have boosted again because of your focus powers and your focus points you want to have those things those will boost your abilities massively i cannot understate that uh, and really, this is it for now. Like I said, there's a lot to go over. Uh, how occultists cast their spells is important. Uh, not just the fact that they're psychic spellcasters and thus have the mental and emotional components, but with their implements, the implement focus powers, and then the focus power points that they have. There's a lot of ground to cover here. They, again, they seem like they fit a similar role to the Bard, and maybe kind of they do, but they don't. They're, they're not. They're not Bards by any stretch of the imagination. I'm actually really impressed, but it is kind of a complex class. So, hopefully this has helped you kind of get an idea of what we're diving into. This has given you a look at what kind of a build we're going for, hopefully. And right there, we're going to call it for now, because otherwise my tired mind can ramble on needlessly forever. So, if you liked the video, go on down there into the comments down below. Hit the like button, let me know what you thought. If you disliked the video, well, still, do the same. Let me know what you thought, why you disliked it. I'm more than happy to engage in discussion, and I'm happy to take the opportunity to learn a great deal, in this case, in regards to the cultist. Uh, occultist. I've been looking through various other online guides, which I will try to remember to put down in the comments below because the different guides that have been put out there are very, very useful for me uh, and will ideally be useful for you as well. And if you have enjoyed today's video, well, guess what? There's going to be a couple more popping up over this way. One is something that the almighty algorithm employed by Google and YouTube has decided that you will enjoy. The other is just something else that I've put up here recently, which ideally should also be good. And if this hasn't been your first stop here at the Gamer's Den, well, you must be enjoying something, so why not consider hitting that subscribe button? Certainly we'd be happy to have you here. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night. Mm, tasty. <laughs>